Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. Saturday, April 30th, just after noontime, Mountain Time 2022. Now, the first solar eclipse of the year begins in just one hour and 28 minutes, but it's only visible in the Southern Hemisphere. If you want to watch it, you can watch it live here at Time and Date in two hours. But the big story, Northeast residents express exasperation with the ridiculous cold weather. The calendar is approaching May, but for many, the past couple of weeks has made it feel more like February. Keep calm. It's actually almost May. Now, winter makes a comeback in New England. The first day of spring was more than a month ago, but it really doesn't matter. It's quite cold. I feel depressed, actually, Daha Ola, a New Jersey resident, told AccuWeather National reporter Jillian Angeline. We're still using the heat. We've spent a lot of money on gas. Can the cold weather go away? It literally feels like winter. And we're three days from May, said one person on the tweet box. What's going on? Well, I'll tell you. It's a rough spring, ding ding, and the sun is shutting down. And we are dipping deeper and deeper into the eddy minimum. Homes completely blown away as tornado rips through Kansas. Well, that doesn't look like a good parking job now, does it? Thousands are without power after a suspected twister tore through parts of the state on Friday evening. Tornado, heavy damages, homes, the YMCA east of Wichita, Kansas. And there is more pictures of this devastation. Just take a look at how the cars were just thrown about. Uh, there is no official word on the magnitude of this tornado, but the tornado approached from the southwest, uh, where a neighborhood is located. More than a dozen homes have been destroyed in that area, and we have video footage of that neighborhood. So let's go take a quick look at that and our hearts and our prayers go out to these folks as we fly over the devastation of one neighborhood. And you can see how tornadoes work. They affect some more than others. This house right here is completely gone. Look at that house. Whew. Oh my goodness. And then this guy is spared. These people didn't even come near them. Wow, that was some amazing footage there. All the links for everything we discussed today will be below the video. Parched winter wheat crop is badly stressed. Drought escalates on the high plains. This is Kansas. The field photographed here is less than six inches tall, less than half of what it would be in a normal year. And it's looking kind of shriveled. The Kansas wheat crop recorded a record 52 bushels per acre back in 2021. But it could total a fraction of that this year unless rain falls on the crop soon. It's currently rated 36% poor. That's not good news, as millions of bees that were transported on a Delta flight have died in extreme heat after being left on the tarmac in Atlanta. These bees were headed to Alaska. So, 5 million bees bound for Alaska were forced to stop in Atlanta where most of them died. And that's going to mean that a lot of the fruit crops up in Alaska or nut trees, whatever they're using them for, are going to be affected. That's not good news. Not good news for anyone. Severe storms possible over the central U.S. Critical fire weather conditions in the southwest. Severe thunderstorms with damaging winds, large hail, and heavy rainfall are possible from the lower Mississippi Valley northward into the western Great Lakes through this evening. Meanwhile, dry and gusty conditions will again result in critical fire conditions across much of the southwest elsewhere. Strong and damaging winds are possible over parts of the central plains. And the heavy winds are in the magenta here, so click on your county if you want more information. And it's going to be, well, it's going to be yellow and gray. High wind warnings in the central plains there. So, And flooding again up in the northern plains. So... Those are your warning risks for the next 24 hours. Let's take a look at the GFS model for total snowfall as we move it through here Sunday, May 1st into May 2nd. Those parched regions are going to be picking up a little bit of moisture here starting Monday, which will be their fun day. And that's good news for Nebraska. Especially, take a look at Idaho. It's going to be a banner rafting season in Idaho. And the snow continues just to pile up in the northwest. So the northwest looks like it's going to be Drought free as we head into summer. Now, the Southwest, that's a different story. Much different. Seismic update. We have one interesting quake 
happening in the New Madrid region here, Peerless Park in Misery. That's the Appalachian Fault System. Or it could be something more nefarious, like deep well injection. Woodbine, Kansas, that's probably the culprit there. Toxic waste being pumped into the subsurface. No other quakes of note. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Fuego, Semaru, Ibu, Sangay, Liwoltolo, Nevados de Ruiz, Sabancaya, and Manam. Nothing out of the ordinary or significant. All volcanoes are puffing as normal. Ibu, though, has some intense explosions continue, just small scale. So no worries there. Now let's take a look at what's been happening with the active sun. As the sunspot turns around the limb, the big, uh, the big one we were worried about days ago, the earth-facing quiet ends, and we get a series of M flares, boom, 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 and an X flare just moments ago. The X flare is not going to be geo-effective because it's shooting away from the earth, and the more recent M flare, probably not geo-effective. This M flare, however, is potentially geo-effective and should arrive shortly, and we're going to go check out those models. As we look at the telemetry here at the Discover Solar Wind, we can probably see here that that coronal whole stream coupled with us right about zero UTC here in the change of the day, but very little pump to the density and a decrease in, in plasma speed. So nothing happening as far as geo-effective except a short three-hour period of KP5 and then it dropped off the cliff. But we should see this increase in just a day or so. And here we are over at Iswa where we can see that X flare shooting away from the earth. They just removed the M flare that was clipping us in about a day from now. So we're going to be looking for that activity to increase over the weekend, probably uh, Sunday night. But we'll keep a close eye on that for you. And you can keep a close eye on telemetry yourself by going over to solarham.net where they update all of space weather quite rapidly. And here's the parting X flare that we're talking about that we just saw. And here they're discussing the M flare that may be coming to hit Earth. Now, the effect of the M flare should only bring us up into KP5 or 6, so not a big deal. What is a big deal is Willie Soon just sent me his latest paper, and it got accepted in a major journal. Now, this was a fight, but it is in the journal, Predicting Atlantic Hurricanes Using Machine Learning. And it's quite an interesting paper, so we're going to leave you links to the entire paper, which just came out, just accepted. Nobody's got this except friends of Willie Soon. And it was released on the 25th of April, accepted on the 26th of April, and published yesterday, the 29th of April, 2022. And we have the full PDF, and it's, it's just an, in, an intriguing paper, because what it shows is that there's definite natural cycles going on with hurricanes. Now, the math might be quite complex, but the graphics, well, they're easy to understand, where they overlay large hurricanes on time scales using their data analysis. And what they analyzed was Cat 4, Cat 5, or Cat 5, Cat 4, Cat 3, Cat 2 hurricanes, and when they will peak. And here you're looking at the probabilistic hindcast in the forecast for Cat 5s. And the last flurry of Cat 5s was back in 2017, 18, 19, right here. And there have been very few Cat 5s since then. And the prediction here, based on machine learning, should be 2028 through 2032 will be the Cat 5 five years. So that is when we're looking for five Cat 5s peaking in 2030. Now, what's going to be peaking this year? Well, in 2020, we could be seeing 2021, 2022, we could be seeing multiple Cat 4s. So for the next two years, we should be looking for Cat 4 storms making landfall, as well as Cat 3 storms are going to be peaking here at 2024. So check out the paper. It's really interesting. Fresh off the presses. No one has access to it, but our listeners and friends, dear friends of Willie Soon. And that's a boom. So print it out and share it around. Newly found Martian auroras defy easy explanation. The worm-like aurora spanned half of the red planet. Amazing. Now, this doesn't mean that a galactic cosmic wave is almost here and has just hit Mars and is about to hit Earth. Not at all, but I'm sure some people may assume that because they don't actually read the paper or, or know about the science. Now, the discovery of these discrete auroras in the atmosphere 
have only come to light because they've only been studied recently by the Hope Orbiter, which has been at work just since February of 2021. Now, we know Mars has Apache magnetic field, but it makes it hard to track them down because that magnetic field is patchy. But auroras, and there's different types of auroras happening on Mars, but we really haven't had someone looking at it. And now we have the Hope Orbiter looking at these auroras. Now, one other thing, we are solar, approaching solar max. So what we should be seeing is more and more aurora on Mars as we reach sunspot maximum. And we've had lots of X-flares fire off towards Mars, and it's definitely one of those that caused these auroras. Nothing more. The sun is responsible for the auroras on Mars. And well, we can see the sun, so we know it's probably not going to do anything crazy anytime soon. Except at any moment, we could have a solar proton event erupt from the surface, similar to the Carrington event, and we'll get to that. Now, Jupiter and Venus will seem to nearly collide in a rare celestial spectacle. And all you need to do is go outside and look up for the next two days when the graphic is missing. Okay, I'll do it later. There it is. All they want is your money. Now, look east before sunrise in the morning on the 30th or, the, or May 1st. So, And you will see the planets in alignment, but most specifically, bright Venus, just to the right of it, will be Jupiter. And they will appear almost as if they're touching. And east before sunrise, you'll see a vertical pattern in the southern hemisphere there. And in the northern hemisphere, you're going to see this angle. So that's how to go out and see a rare celestial spectacle. Now, these won't line up like this again for 17 more years when I'll be almost 70. So who knows if I'll even be here. The wrath of... Solar storm, NASA reveals the horror of the day the sun brought darkness to Earth. And they're talking about the Quebec blackout back in 1989. It was one of the most terrifying acts of the sun. And NASA explains how an intense solar storm could strike Earth and destroy power grids and send humanity back to the Stone Age. That sounds pretty dangerous. It's incredible to think that the same solar storm which caused beautiful auroras in the sky can also call, cause widespread damage and destruction on Earth. But history is filled with examples when the sun exploded in fury and sent so storms so intense that the entire Earth suffered. And NASA has revealed the incident that took place on March 13, 1989. Today, commonly known as in today, which is commonly known as Quebec blackout, showed how destructive a solar storm can be. The entire 1.6 million square mile wide province suffered an electrical power blackout. And that is just a taste of things to come from the sun. As we ramp up into solar max, the magnetosphere wanes during the excursion we're now experiencing. Now, how to watch the April 2022 solar eclipse online? Well, you just go online where you can watch it. What time and date? The link below and click play. And in 118 minutes, the partial solar eclipse in the Southern Hemisphere will be streamed live. So check it out. We highly recommend it. And some really practical tips before we finish up zucchini companion plants. What to grow alongside your zucchini for a bumper crop. Now, if you don't know, companion plants are plants that you grow with other crops to help them thrive. And the way they do this is they bring in the correct predators to keep out bad insects or vice versa. They can keep away predators. So this is the most comprehensive companion planting with zucchini article I have ever seen. And basically tells you all the different types of plants, flowers, and herbs you can grow next to your zucchini for a bumper crop. Now, some of the main pests for zucchini are cucumber beetles, aphids, cutworms, squash vine borers, spider mites, thrips, leaf miners, and whitefly. But by using certain herbs, flowers, and even other vegetables, you can bring in the right biome. This is all part of a type of pest management, which is called integrated pest management, or IPM, where you actually, your pesticides are your plantings instead of actual chemicals. And certain herbs like dill, lavender, chives, and oregano help bring in the right pollinators and push out the bad bugs. And other flowers, 
such as nasturtium, can actually be beneficial. Now read the article. It goes on and on to talk about borage, sweet alyssum, and many other things, including vegetables you can grow with your zucchini, spinach, garlic, beans, and peas, and corn, even radish. So check it out. Abundance is the key this year as we are starved out of our own supermarkets because we're priced out. You can grow your own food for free or at very low cost. And we implore you to start doing that now. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where the current administration thinks everyone's doing fine and there's no such thing as a recession on the horizon. Well, you come here for the wake up call. And that is a boom. Subscribe if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be safe. We love you. Have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.